Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Joe Simpson. So here is an area of expertise that I will probably need your input on. Uh, I wanted to talk about fishing line today. I talk a lot about rods and reels, baits, and different fishing techniques, but I rarely talk about fishing line. It's probably the least thought that I give to any of the gear in my fishing game, and it's probably the most important, or at least one of the most important. Um, I wanted to start talking, first of all, types of fishing line. Then I wanted to talk about, within those types of fishing lines, different brands. And then I wanted to talk about uh, the different applications and when you might want to use one versus the other. So I fish a lot of ponds and I fish mostly bait casting gear. Um, I have found that for my purposes, 90% of the time I can use a rod and reel equipped with a 30 pound braid tied to just about anything and I can catch fish. With the caveat being that the braid has to be, I think, the right color. Um, some people argue that color doesn't matter. I like uh, when I'm using a braid or uh, a hybrid line or something that's not uh, a true mono or fluorocarbon, I like to use line that is kind of darker and matches the water staining of the areas that I'm fishing in. Kind of, kind of makes sense. It's kind of camouflaged. So let's talk about some of these lines. In front of me today, I have Berkeley, Spider Wire, J Braid, and Power Pro. Um, and I don't have these for any other reason that usually this is what was on sale and it's what I bought. So I've been kind of cycling through different types of braids and I've come to determine that I've liked certain ones over the others. Um, first of all, I think right out of the gates, I just think the J Braid 8, it's an 8 carrier. Now, when they make this braided line, it's actually braided. Um, you can take four pieces of line and you can braid it all together to make a fishing line, or you can take eight pieces of line and braid it all together. Now the eight carrier wire or the eight carrier braid is gonna move smoother through your guides. So sometimes with your fishing rod, you might want a smoother braid for your guides, um, and there might be other applications for a smoother braid. Pat, he lives by J Braid 8. I mean, if you were to say, hey, what's your line? What are you gonna go with? I think he would just buy a bunch of J Braid 8 and be done with it. Um, I really like the Power Pro, and I, also, this one wasn't over here. I also like the, the Cast King braid a lot. It's really, really strong. Now, I haven't done any like actual uh, strength tests on these lines to see which ones hold up and which knots hold better. I don't think it's really necessary. I think if I have a 30 pound braid and it gives me anywhere from 25 to 32 pounds of strength, I'm fine with that. Um, if I'm using a 10 pound braid and it gets me anywhere from 8 to 12, I'm okay with that. So, I know there's a window of flexibility there for these braids and their ratings, and I'm okay with all of that. But my question is for you guys, of all of these braid types, which ones do you guys like to use? I have Berkeley X9. It's $17 for a spool of 40 pound braid, 165 feet, which I think was a good price. It was on sale. Um, I have spider wire, which I, I've used this a few times. It's 30 pound spider wire. It feels fine. The J Braid 8, again, this is a super slick, easy line to deal with, but I find a lot of uh, issues with wind and knots, and sometimes abrasion will end this line pretty quickly, so it's a little more sensitive to the durability aspects. But really, for my purposes, I actually tried some of this Cast King on a giant spool. It's like 30 pounds, 547 yards. You can get it for a good price off of uh, Amazon. And it sounds like rope going through the guides, like, you know, when you're grinding on something, it's like, you know, kind of like cutting through. So hopefully it's not ruining my guides, but it is really tough. I really, really like the Cast King braided lines and I love Power Pro and it's very similar to the Cast King. It's a little thinner. Um, the same uh, pound ratings in the Power Pro tends to be a little bit thinner than the braided line from Casking for sure. And then Power Pro, of course, makes a, a super slick product, which is similar to the J Braid 8. But I actually like the J Braid 8 if I want something slick. I like the Power Pro and Casking if I want something a little more durable and, you know, saw cutting, cutting through the weeds, um, you know, frog fishing, heavier duty stuff. Um, I've never tried the Berkeley X9. It's just still in the box. What do you guys think about this stuff? And what about the spider wire? I don't think I've used that very much either. So... Anyway, that's kind of my braided line rundown. Let's talk about some other lines. I think one of the best lines ever made on the planet is that one right there. It's so basic. It's a Stren original 12 pound. I put this on my stuff. I do um, 
I can do topwater popper fishing with this. I can do crankbait, square bills, lipless, Texas rig, you know, anything that you might need a little bit of flex in your line. This is awesome, especially if you need something that floats. So it's a little more invisible than braid. It's a very good quality line. I've used it for years and years and years. I think it's just still a go-to. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think about Stren original? I love the the color cast. I think it looks great in the water. I know it's not completely invisible, but man, this stuff just works and it doesn't get gnarly on the reel. It holds up well. I can't say enough good things about it. I also have a Stren mono eight pound and I use that for like poppers on spinning rods and things like that. One honorable mention in the mono line is the Cast King Masters monofilament fishing line. If you've ever seen me fishing with this pink line right here, um, this is also a 12 pound rated mono, but I don't know if you can see this. You probably definitely can't, but the same line cast King versus Stren, I would say the cast King is about 15% smaller than the Stren, at least the way it feels. So this masters mono by cast King, I bought it in pink, but you can also get it various colors. I think it was the only color it was available in when I bought it. So I just picked it up thinking it wouldn't matter a whole lot, but it looks pretty cool. People pick on me a lot about it anyway. Um, but yeah, Stren and Cast King Mono, I like those. And I know I'm missing a big one, Trilene. That's a real big mono that everybody loves. And I'm definitely not uh, pushing that by the wayside. I just don't have any. And the only fluorocarbon that I have is Berkeley <laughs> Vanish. Um, I use it on the spinning rods. I used it with jerk baits. I'm a little halfway on the fluorocarbon. I have not joined the fluorocarbon gang. I don't think the knots tie as well. It doesn't act very nice on the reel. I know it's the invisible line you want to use in the winter when you're jerk baiting. But other than that, I hardly ever use fluorocarbon. How many of you guys fish strictly with fluorocarbon? Some people I hear fish with it year round and it's the only thing they use because it doesn't have any, um, any flex. It also sinks well. It's good for baits when you're swimming the baits, but should I be exploring more in the fluorocarbon line in the spring fishing, or am I doing good enough just with my uh, braided lines and my monos? But yeah, give me some feedback. I just want to hear your thoughts on fishing line and what you use and how you use it. And those are some ideas that I have. And then let's just go through the different fishing types that you would use some of these fishing lines. If you have a frog and a frog rod and you're frog fishing, I use straight braid. I use 40 pound and up. I don't necessarily have to use 60 and 70 pound braid like some of these guys down in Alabama and Georgia, but I use straight braid. It has no flex. Uh, it floats and it will get you out of trouble when your frogs get hung up in the weeds, especially with a fish on. Um, when it comes to 90% of the other baits that I swim, I have no problems using anywhere from a 20 to 30 pound braid and I'll tie just about anything on a popper, um, a walking bait, a square bill. I get hits with straight braid all the time. So I'm not afraid to use that as my go-to line. So if I were to just say, Hey, let's set up a rod and reel for 24 hour, seven days a week fishing, and you're never going to change it. I would just get a medium cast King rod. I'd get one of my DC reels. I'd string it up with 25 pound braid, uh, either gray or moss. And I would be done. I, that's what I would fish with. Um, but when it comes to you know, a little bit more of the off-season fishing, the, the harder conditions, the more finicky fish. I do like to switch to a mono. I really like the mono on a square bill rod because when you're using that kind of a rod, and it's, first of all, a very forgiving, flexible rod, and it's like that because you want to have those treble hooks get set in that fish mouth. You don't want to yank them right out. So you want a little bit of give in the rod, and that mono just feels perfect when you're working that rod that way. It feels more like a, a slow dragging sensation rather than a hard hit. If you've ever fished with a square bill and straight braid, maybe on a rod that was a little too stiff, you realize pretty quickly that it's not the right combination. And I've had really good success with fluorocarbon straight on a reel fishing the jerk baits. That stuff is like invisible, you can't see it. But I don't have too many other applications where I like to run fluorocarbon. Maybe it's in my head, but you guys help me out with that. Let me know when and where you like to use certain lines and how you use them. And let's go a little deeper on the next video. Maybe we'll do some tests. Thanks a lot. Talk to you guys soon.